What's going on guys? CJ Media here, back in the garage from a five week trip to Japan, Vietnam, Hong Kong, China, Thailand. I'm back in my garage, back at it on my FD. Before I be in my video today, I want to say thank to my man Maz Evo, who's actually one of my subscribers here on CJ Media, and he sent me this custom shirt for Christmas. I didn't ask for it. I came back home and he sent me this and like a Japanese flag and a bunch of stickers. So thanks to Maz Evo and you gotta look at the back too. He says Ishin and number zero. How cool is that? Unfortunately today because it's cold as hell and you can probably see my breast there. I won't be wearing this and I don't want to make it dirty. But I just want to say thanks to Maz Evo, one of my subscribers for sending me this sweet shirt. As I always say, my channel wouldn't be here without my fans and supporters and subscribers. So thanks again to Maz Evo and everybody like Maz Evo who is here supporting my channel. I'm just here to share my passion. I do this stuff anyways with or without YouTube. Uh, and then hopefully along the way if I can educate and entertain you guys, that'd be great. All right, so today we're working on the wire harness on the FD. I probably spent like 50 hours behind the camera, if not like 100 or 150 hours, I don't even know, I lost count. Uh, just kind of studying the wiring harness, how everything works, and basically just getting rid of everything I don't need. Airbags, uh, traction control, and ABS systems, uh, everything that has to do with emissions has been completely eliminated. And the wiring harness for the body looks like it has lost three times the weight. It has been simplified completely and I always say simplicity is key to reliability. So let me just uh, walk you through what harness are laying down here. So this is the engine harness for the LS. Here is the connection that goes on to the ECU. You got the red and the blue just goes in. Super simple OBD2 cable connection there and then bunch of connectors which I also label so I don't lose really track of what goes where which I will explain later on and also thanks to the guys from wirecare wirecare.com these guys hooked me up with all kinds of heat shrinks and uh, wire protections and this is the Mazda chassis harness that came with the car OEM um, a lot of stuff again has been removed I don't want to go into details because that will take like six hours to go through but you can kind of see here you can get an idea of how much wiring has disappeared this grommet on the firewall was completely filled out but now I only have like 20 wires going through uh, it makes me happy and scares me at the same time that I have lost so much wiring This car might just catch on fire on first start We'll see that if it does that will make for a funny YouTube video And the uh, fuse box has been shrunk down as in uh, Not everything in here has been retained But I have basically extended it So I'm going to be relocating the fuse box from the engine bay to behind the passenger seat where the battery box will also be kept. And the third harness on the FD is the rear chassis harness. It has also been completely simplified. I have the, I think the ABS module back here, which was a complete chaos. I removed that completely. And the rear wire harness actually went through the passenger side into the passenger side uh, firewall. So that's being eliminated. Hopefully, I can control everything from the driver's side and energize everything that way. We'll find out. But for now, I'm gonna start putting all these wiring harnesses back in the car to see the uh, the lens. And if the lens is correct, I'm gonna uh, wrap it with the wrap I got from wirecare.com and go from there. All right guys, I'm now back in the garage from the last section of the video to this point, I think about two, three weeks have passed. I took the harness inside the house and kind of walked on it. And I think now it's ready to be installed on the vehicle. In the meantime, I was also working on the new C0 design as well as the new C0 4G63 hoodie and t-shirt. And all of this should be available on my website soon. I was also in Empalme, Hamasio, Mexico for about a week, so you know, Life happens, things slow down, and I, I'm not sure you noticed, but 
I've started kind of reorganizing my garage as well. I want to get rid of some of this shelf space, which is a piece I got from a GM dealership that was closing. So these are like super durable, heavy duty shelves. I love them, but it's taking up a lot of space. So I have relocated a lot of my fluids and stuff on the wall. And it looks awesome too, hanging out there. Anyways, let's get started on the wiring harness. Today I'm just, I'm just gonna cover the engine harness I think because doing the engine harness and the chassis harness and explaining all of them in one episode is going to be quite lengthy. So I'm gonna try to show you to best of my knowledge how everything fits together on an LS engine and how you should wire everything up. So first thing you should do before you LS swap a car before you start wiring up your LS engine you need to download the harness pinup. Um, on the LS engines, if you're using OEM ECU that is, you got the red side and the blue side and both of these would basically hook in to the ECU itself. Depending on the vehicle you're um, swapping the engine into, you're going to have a different layout for the chassis harness. So for example on the FD, the fuel pump and the fuel uh, relay and all that still on the stock uh, FD Mazda chassis harness and I'm kind of integrating that into the LS swap engine harness so you know definitely do your studies first up like I said I got the engine is your harnesses red and blue this is exactly what you want to follow I'm not sure if you can see that but there are numbers written right above the cables there you go okay so what I'm gonna do is just quickly show you how the LS engine harness is routed on the engine itself so you can kind of see how um, how the harness is installed on the engine. And then I'm gonna take it off the engine and show you exactly which connector goes where. So just a quick overview of how everything is placed right now. Here we go. On the passenger side, okay, I got the crank position sensor, I think. Yep, crank. Uh, this is installed near the starter. Next to that is also a water temperature sensor. I'll get into that later. So the LS engine kind of splits into two down the middle and comes down here and it also splits into two one on the left one on the right towards the transmission for the o2 sensors and transmission speed sensors and whatnot on the left side here you got your connect connection for the injectors right so you got four four left and right you got one plug for the uh, coil packs and for me i have power for the fan control which is got the fuse box right here in the future, I do plan on cleaning everything up and putting all the fuse box inside the car. But for now, I don't want to do too much at the same time because when you do that, you lose track of what's working, what's not working. And if there's any issue, you don't really know what happened because you changed so much. You can't really track down issues, right? So you want to change things one by one if possible. Okay, so back here, I got map pressure sensor. I got here cam pushing sensor and these go in the back here for my ls6 engine the cam position sensor is in the back but for some ls engines it's also in the front so make sure you read up on where your cam position sensor is located um here i have the oil pressure sensor this is the speed hot pressure sensor sender i'll be running speed hot oil pressure oil temperature and water temperature for inside the cabin so i can see in the dash for the ECU side though, you only need to understand water temperature. So I have here the stock GM water temperature, which is connected to the harness here. Other than that, you don't need oil pressure, oil temperature for the ECU to run the car, which is which makes it extremely simple. These engines are as complicated as it might look right now. Um, after a little bit of patience and studying, it starts to make sense and this engine is really simple. You start to understand the reason why people are less up their cars because it's so easy, the mechanics, the wiring, and it's just so cheap to do at the same time. So, you know, going from the super complicated Rats Nest RX-7 rotary engine with twin turbo and all this wiring and uh, piping and boost lines, it's so much easier. To walk on on the right side here we got coolant temperature uh like a th so this is where the intake sits right so i got like the uh map sensor uh intake air temperature sensor things like that i'll explain this to you once i get it off the car on the driver's side we have uh 
one harness used for the driver side O2 sensor and this is the vehicle speed sensor this is not exactly necessary I heard to run the car but that's there and I have another connection for oil temperature sensor which is going to be installed on oil filter housing using the improved racing um i don't know adapter this is going to be installed just above the oil filter on the oil filter housing of in and out for the accu sump so oil can come in and out do its thing and uh, run into engine oil cooler at the same time and here have the oil temperature sensor that's going to be sending out the oil temperature information to the speed hot gauge inside the cabin so let's take this off real quick so i can show you exactly which connector goes where and does what okay guys i'm back again and i keep doing this and i swear this is the last time i'm going to be making changes to the harness before i put it on the car and test fitting sinks but let me just show you that in the last portion of the video when i was walking on the harness i showed you the fan control unit where all the relays and fuses were inside the box that's been relocated to the inside of the car i told you guys that i was gonna relocate it later in the build but i decided why not what the hell the car is completely apart i'm just gonna do it now so i put the fuse box inside the car which I this guy right here fuse box with relay and everything for the fan control that's gonna be sitting right here next to the battery box which will be relocated to behind the passenger seat wires coming all the way up which is going to be the power wire basically and I ended up creating this new harness here it's going to be run under the headlight under the frame here into the fan and yes in the meantime I also put the radiator back in the car so I can see how long the wire should be for the fan control unit so it's coming together now back to the RS engine harness let me just explain to you again exactly which connector does what and how simple it is to wire up this car so here we go we got the LS ECU red and blue we got the OBD2 cable here also going to be inside the car and we got a couple of wires here coming out that's basically FD RX7 specific you don't have to worry about that if you're not swapping the LS engine into the FD RX7 and then here is basically where the fire was going to be located so all this is going to be inside the car what's from here on is going to be in the engine bay first of all I got here crank position sensor and ground and this is going to go through the passenger side exhaust manifold just right under there and coming down to the manifold side I have a O2 passenger side sensor connector and as well as the reverse light which has been deleted on my car so I technically don't need this connector but if I do need to install the reverse light for any uh, street regulation and laws I'm gonna have to reinstall the switch and connector in the car but I won't be using that and on the driver side of course you have the O2 sensor connector for the driver side just under the exhaust manifold and the vehicle speed sensor connection so that's basically behind the engine right there okay and coming in in the middle of the engine right behind the intake manifold you got map sensor manifold absolute pressure sensor you absolutely need this information to calculate air density and whatnot you also have cam position sensor connector you also have knock sensor these three are going to be installed right behind the intake manifold and luckily we have intake manifold sitting here that's the front that's the back and that is where those connectors will be installed right there on the left side of the intake manifold very simple you got the plug for the coil coil packs and then you got four injectors these injectors are in order one two three four you get this mixed up no worries because these are color coded so like the first one is green here so the one's pink uh, I mean blue and then you got like gray yellow so on so forth easy to uh, pinpoint but these are different lengths so it's hard to mix them up in the first place and on the driver side first of all you got ground for the whole harness very important make sure you hook this up or you're gonna have ground issues and you won't have fun time and then the coil packs repeats again injector connectors one two three four because it's a v8 coming down is basically 
the sensors you're gonna be installing into your throttle body. So first up, we got throttle position sensor. I got starter signal cable to send signal to the starter that the car should be starting up, cranking. I got here idle air control sensor. So the uh, ECU can control the idle speeds. And over here, I got current temperature sensor so that the ECU knows the engine temperature. And last but not least, I have here MAF sensor, mass airflow sensor, and intake air temperature sensor. And that is all you need, guys, to get your LS engine up and running. You don't need anything else. And that's the beauty, and that's the reason, one of the reasons why I decided to go with LS engine instead of like a 2JG or RB26 or any other turbo platforms. There's no backing lines, boost lines, any additional sensors that you have to worry about. It's so simple. This is all you need to run an LS engine. How cool is that? So yeah, this video kind of went back and forth, but I hoped that was good explanation of what kind of connectors and harnesses you should be using to get your LS engine up and running. This is just how I wired up my FTRX7 in my particular case. I'm sure there's many other ways to do it. But this is pretty much as simple as it gets in terms of just turnkey LS engine car. Thanks again for watching guys. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below or send me a message on Facebook or DM me on Instagram. And I'll see you in the next video when I cover the wiring harness for the FD chassis harness.